You're listening to The Front Row. I'm St. John Flynn. The Vocal Music Chamber Ensemble, Grace Song Incorporated, continues its multi-year series of recitals inspired by the five canticles of English composer Benjamin Britten. This coming Sunday evening at Houston's Salem Evangelical Lutheran Church, the Grace Song musicians present a program that explores the darker times that human beings experience during their earthly journeys. The concert is built around a third of Britain's Canticles, a setting of Edith Sitwell's elegiac poem, Still Falls the Rain, a meditation on war and Christ's crucifixion and killing and death. With me in the Geary Performance Studio are the artistic director of Grace Song Incorporated, that's pianist Keith Weber, soprano Julia Fox, and two of this year's Houston Grand Opera studio artists, bass Nicholas Masters and pianist Anna Maria Otamendi. Thank you all very Hello. much. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Great to be here. Keith Weber. Yes. Benjamin Britten's Canticles. Oh, gosh. They're just the best pieces. Five canticles right. in the collection that were written over the course of his, of his life. The, the, That's they, correct. They weren't written sort of as one collection were they that's correct no no no. they span several decades and are on a wide wide range of subjects uh, this one in particular was he wrote in um 1954 and was premiered the next year uh, at wigmore hall for peter pierce and a, a specific horn player dennis brain the wonderful soloist for whom he had written the serenade for tenor horn and strings previously so it's tenor Horn and piano. It's tenor horn and piano, yes. Set to a text, a poem by... Oh, Edith Sitwell, Sitwell, by a, a harrowing mm -hmm. uh, poem that was written uh, in 1941 after the raids in London in 1940 uh, to just express the horror of living through something like that and finding some kind of sense to it. Uh, you know, the... I suppose the whole point of this program is trying to get at this central, unanswerable paradox of evil and war and death and, and its point in existence and what redemption is possible and how. Sticking with the canticles, uh, canticle, this third canticles uh, still falls the rain. In what it expresses, is that unique among the five, or are all five of the canticles oh, sort of dark? It's unique among the five. It's it's yes. Yeah, so this is the bleak one, and it's the one that's the the most. It's been the most interesting to construct a program around because you could go either of two directions, as I, I see it. Uh, one, you could either uh, couch it in happy music. <laughs> <laughs> or once I actually coupled it with a, a piece at a whole opera by Gustav Holst called Savitri, which was a really nice balance to it. It was a whole piece about redemption, basically. But uh, the circumstance here, uh, it all worked out as a very wonderful set of circumstances that allowed us to let this program go to the dark place uh, and kind of stay there. Uh, a very, very, very interesting way that we have set it up. Um, you know, in the, the, the Sitwell poem, it just goes on and on, verse after verse after verse of agony, 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 and then one line of complete sense uh, and complete redemption that you just, just hang on. It's going to make sense. Still will it make sense, and still there will be connection in spite of it all. It's a, a remarkable message. And how does this canticle then fit into the rest of the program? What else is um, on the program? Is we've master, added, um, um, Nick Masters and Anna Maria Otamendi had uh, prepared in the fall the Mussorgsky Songs and Dances of Death. They, you know, they have a wonderful uh, song recital series at Rienzi that the HBO studio do annually uh, a couple of times a year. And it was uh, because of the Newtown shootings uh, it seemed prudent uh, that week to not sing these pieces. Because, because that recital the, was, was right. scheduled right after, within that a couple of days. That recital was literally the evening of, right. or oh. th that morning had been the shootings, yeah. and that evening was the recital where we were supposed to do these pieces. And right. um, I'm actually from Connecticut. I'm not too far from Newtown. And right. the whole atmosphere of how that touched um, our nation and how it touched 
honestly me and and Ana Maria just didn't feel appropriate to to perform the pieces then and so we kind of took it as a uh, oh, oh well you know we'll perform them somewhere else and uh, thankfully um, Keith got wind of it and it made its way into this program. So. Yeah well the minute I heard of it I just thought hmm well uh, there's an opportunity here not only um, to not let their good work go to waste uh, or to, to actually have be heard but actually to make uh, to incorporate into this program uh, some very, very colorful stuff. And so we asked to, them and they agreed, and we basically rebuilt the whole program from scratch. We're going to um, hear a couple of pieces uh, of the, from the Mozolski collection. Um, set the first one up for us, uh, titled Lullaby. Nick? Or Anna, or Anna Maria? Go ahead. Um, well, this piece is one of Mozolski's masterpieces in the genre, the whole Songs and Dances of Death. And um, especially because it depicts very specific emotions and situations with, through the music. So at the beginning, you're going to hear a very bleak landscape, a very poor house with a little candle and a dying child. And basically, the song is a dialogue between death and the desperate mother that doesn't want the child to be taken from her. So I think you're going to hear Nick portraying these two characters in a very distinctive way. So. Well, let's hear this Mazowski then. Lullaby. We will hear uh, Nick Masters' bass, Anna Maria Otamendi at the piano, and you're listening to the front row.
Nick Mouse is singing Modest Mussorgsky's lullaby from his songs of dances and songs and dances of death, Anna Maria Otamendi at the piano. From Grey Song Inc.'s uh, recital coming up this weekend, centered around Benjamin Britten's Canticle Number no. 3. Yes, and so this was when these pieces became available, um, the program began to change, of course, and so now we're expressing where we found uh, uh, for Julia Fox to sing some wonderful stuff from her vast rep um, of all across the musical world as little expressive bits to place in between these songs. And um, there's several, several different and interesting things. Uh, she's pulling out of her uh, repertoire right now some music by George Crumb. That's right. Um, Lullaby. Yes, again, a kind of a... a Sickening, tragic, not sure what's going on here. Uh, infant mortality scenario. This is a... Uh, is it a collection, Keith? Yes. Madrigal. Yes, there were several sets of these madrigals, which are chamber pieces. Uh, they're not actually piano pieces. Here, uh, I'll be impersonating... Uh, a harp and a vibraphone. <laughs> Although I have brought my toothbrush and we'll get one of the effects correct. That's right. You, you can't have crumb without a few effects. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, here is Julia Fox with Keith Weber at the piano with George Crumb's lullaby from his collection, Magicals. This is the front row.
Julia Fox, soprano, Keith Webb at the piano with George Crumb's Madrigal. I should say that it's uh, based on a text by Federica Garcia Lorca. That's right. Yeah. So singing in it's a very Spanish there. Very strong writing. <clears throat> We're going to hear another of the Mazorgsky next. We'll bring Nick and uh, Anna Maria back from his uh, Songs and Dances of Death. This one is titled Tree Pack. Yes. Um, and... There's four songs to the, the cycle, each taking kind of a, a look at a specific instance of, of death that in, you know, when you're examining it probably would have been actually not far from uncommon in, in uh, 19th century Russia. Um, and so this song, uh, a trepak, is a, is a traditional Russian dance. And this song finds us, um, finds a, a peasant, a, a Russian serf, stuck in a blizzard, drunk, he's coming, either going home or going somewhere. Um, he's drunk, he's dancing, and uh, death starts dancing with him. And eventually the blizzard wraps him up and, and death kind of puts him to sleep under a blanket of snow and he dies dreaming of, of the harvest and of, um, of the beautiful, you know, beautiful sky and doves flying, so. That's good vodka. <laughs> 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 well, let's hear this uh, then. Uh, tree pack from the Mazulski's Songs and Dances of Death. Bass, Nick Masters, with Anna Maria Otamendi at the piano. This is the front row. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
распинать или пять или огорчик мой снежком согрей. Вдруг тебя великую угроза твою. Thank you, thank you. Powerful stuff there. Tripak from Modest Nozorgsky's Songs and Dances of Death. We heard uh, Nick Masters' bass yeah. and Anna Maria Otamendi at the piano. Grey Song, in cooperation with the Houston Grand Opera Studio, presents the recital Canticle 3, Still Falls the Rain, Sunday evening at 7.30 at Houston's Salem Evangelical Lutheran Church on West Belfort. You'll find more information on the Grey Song website. And there's a link to that at our website, thefrontrow.org. Thank you all here in the Geary Performance Studio for being here. To our pianists, uh, Anna Maria Otamendi and Keith Weber. To bass, Nick Masters and soprano, Julia Fox. Thank you. We appreciate the preview. Thank you very well, much. Thank you. You're so very welcome. Pleasure to be thank here. you. And thank you also to our audio producers, Todd Hauslander and Joseph Simon. This is The Front Row. <laughs>